In this video, we'll talk about finding the measures of central tendency, finding weighted means, estimating sample means, and describing the shape of various distributions. Coming right up. We're going to start with measures of central tendency, the mean. So after we've got our graphical view of our data, then we supplement that view with numerical st statistics that uh, describe the center and the spread of the data. All of this, the graphical view, the measures of central tendency, and the descriptions of the spread are descriptive statistics. Measures of central tendency, that's a single value that describes how data clusters around a central value. And the measures of central tendency are the mean, the median, and the mode. We're going to start off with the population mean. So that's represented by the Greek letter mu, and that counts every data point in the entire population divided by capital N, the number of the whole population. We very rarely have a chance to do this. It's usually way too many and impossible to count everyone in the population. And what we do instead is we represent the population mean with the sample mean. Now notice that's x bar. It's got a bar above the top. That uh, Greek letter sigma x means count every data point in your sample and divide by lowercase n the number in the sample. We can apply the formula for the mean of a sample, and in this case, this example is throw a single dice 10 times, and you can see the data set there, 1, 4, 3, 5, 1, 3, 6, 2, 5, 3. So if we add up all of the different data points, that would be written as sigma x. That gives us 33. And then we divide that by the number, lowercase n, because it's a sample, in this case 10. Then that means that the mean or the average is 3.3. The median of a data set is the value exactly in the middle of the data. If there's an even number of data points, we'll have to take an average of the two middle values. If there's an odd number, it's just the value in the middle. The mode of a data set is the value that occurs most frequently. In our example, we've got a single dice that's been thrown 10 times, and we want to find the median and the mode. So we will start with the median. And to do that, we order our dice throws from the lowest to the largest. And we see we have a count of 10. So the two values exactly in the middle are actually both 3. So for the median, the average of 3 plus 3 divided by 3, I still have to take an average, don't I? The median then is 3 plus 3 all divided by 2. And of course, that's still just 3, isn't it? For the mode, however, now what I have to do is count the entries that are most frequent. And I would say that's 3. There are 3 times the value 3. And the next one that occurs very frequently, there are two times the value 5, or the dice throw 5. And 3 is the most frequently uh, observed data point, so the mode then is 3. I want to compare the mean, the median, and the mode. And we're going to do that with an example. Let's suppose we have grandparents that want to throw a party for their six-year-old grandson, and he invites six of his friends. The grandmother invites her elderly grandmother. We want to find the average age of the party, so we'll need to find the mean, the median, and the mode. We're going to use the calculator to help us with some of this. So if I hit Stat and then Edit, and I can input all of the ages into List 1. You can see I pre-populated List 1. And Second Quit gets me back to the home screen. If I hit Stat and I scroll 1 over to Calc, 
and choose one variable statistics. I want to make sure that it says my list is in list one, which it is, and go down to calculate. And I can see there that the mean here is 24.8. And when I scroll down, I can also see the median is six. Now I'll need to scan the data to find the mode. And as I look at the data, I see that there are four values of five years of age and three values of six years of age. So the mode must be five. So comparing the mean, the median, and the mode, the mean's not a very good description of the average age. You would think from that there'd be a lot of 20-year-olds at the party. But there's something skewing or impacting the data, and that's the outlier data, that's the name, for the 52, 55, and 103 ages. They're very, very much further away than the first seven, which are all five- and six-year-olds. So in a case where we've got this sort of outlier, and we call this left skewed data, then the median is a better measure of central tendency being in the middle. The next thing we'll think about is the weighted mean or the weighted average. We have a formula for that. X bar, the weighted mean, is the sum of all the products of the entries times the weight divided by the sum of the weights. In a class, the professor has the weighted grading scheme shown below. So if a a, the weighted grading scheme is 10% for homework, 10% for discussions, 50% for chapter tests, 10% for midterms, and 20% for the final. That's 100%. So the student makes the following grades. 85% for homework, 90% for discussion, 75% for chapter tests, 72 for the midterm, and then finally 71% on the final. What is the overall average? In order to just find the weighted means, then, I have to add up all the scores multiplied by the weights. So that's going to be the sum of xw is going to be 76.4. And then I've got to multiply that by the sum of all the weights, which in this case will be 100. When I put that into my calculator, I'll see that I get 0 0.764. And as a percent, that's 76. 0.4%. We can actually do this in our calculator. I'm going to hit uh, Stat and Edit, and I've still got the previous data in List 1, so I'm going to have to go back to Stat, scroll down to Clear List, and then hit Enter, and then Second List. Everything's in that List 1. Hit Enter, and that clears it out. Now I want to put all of the weights in list one. So I'm going to hit edit. So 10%, 10, 50, 10, 20. And then I'm going to put all of the scores in list two. And I have to remember where I put everything. So the scores are 85, 90, 75, 72, and 71. Now remember, I've got to remember the weights are in list 1 and the scores are in list 2. So I'm going to go second, quit to get me back to the home screen. And then I want to hit stat. I'm going to scroll over to calc and I'm going to say one variable statistics. And this opens up my stat wizard. My list, or the X scores, well, that's not in list one, is it? That's in second list. That's in list two. And the frequencies or the weights, they are in list one. So I have to remember where I put things. And I'm going to come down here to calculate. And you can see it's got my score for me of 76.4. I would like to invite you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much for listening.